Previously on The Bill. You and I both know I didn't do it. I just got me notes in a model. No, Cash, you lied. You've obviously got a guardian angel somewhere. Well, you've got a lot to learn about the way things work around here, trainee detective constable, so remember that. No wonder he was annoyed. I've got him out of the picture. Lads nicked his mobile phone. Any description? I see one late teens. Well, can I go now? Yeah, you'll have to come with us to make a statement. It won't take long. Come on. Why don't you give it to CSU? Why? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? No, not to me. It's just a straightforward robbery, isn't it? Well, if it is, then CSU will give it your back. What's his problem? Debbie, it's Tom again. Could you give me a ring when you get this message, please? What a mess. We just had it painted as well. Any ideas you could have done it? I'll introduce you. Hello, Lee. Debbie. Sir. I've been trying to get hold of you all morning. Where have you been? Out. Didn't you get my messages? Excuse me, but I'm late enough as it is. Yes, McAllister. My office now. So how pregnant are you? 16 weeks. The doctor confirmed it this afternoon. 16? But surely that's before we You did can it. count, can't you, sir? Hmm? Cast your mind back to four months ago. A disabled toilet at a memorial service. Ring any bells? Well, all right, even if you are pregnant, there's nothing to say it's mine. <sighs> so did anyone actually see him do it? I found him in there. Oh, you caught him red-handed? No, not exactly. Right, but there's no witnesses. If Jamie Rayner says he saw him do it, he was in the same class. And will Jamie make a statement? He might. Yeah, even then, it's his word against Lee's. PC Klein, Lee's just returned to school after a period of truancy, during which time vandalism in this place dried up. His first day back and the toilets get trashed, and you're trying to tell me it's a coincidence. We'll have a word with him then. Thank you. Father, if they're coming in, is it? Debbie, where were you this morning? Doctor's appointment. Anything serious? No. Well, well I'd appreciate it if you let me know in future. You're set? Uh, yeah, almost. Look, we've got to be in court at three. Five minutes, all right? Gov. Alison, what are you doing now? I am so sorry to come barging in like this. You're right, sweet. Yeah. She's feeling much better now, aren't you? Can I do for you, madam? Well, I can't be long. I'm due in court in half an hour. I just got a call from my dad. What's happened? It's my mum. Well, they've rushed her into hospital. They think she's had a heart attack. Oh, no. I really think I ought to get up to Leicester and be with them. Of course you should. The thing is, I can't get hold of your mum. Paul's still stuck in his conference. I didn't know what else to do with Joanna. I know you're really busy. Let me worry about that here. You just get off and go and see your mum. Paul said he could pick Joanna up when he goes to get Sam from nursery. Go on, get going. And ring me later. Let me know how your mum's doing, all right? Oh, and give your mum our love. You ready? Um, no. Why not? This is my daughter, Joanna. Hello, Joanna. Hi. My childcare just fell apart. Well, I'm sorry. You're going to have to get somebody else to look after her. I can't do this without you. Yeah, but I... I'll be in the car. Oh, come on, Dan. Can I only be a couple of hours? No one else can do it. I'm really sorry, Eva. I'm on my way out. I've got these two burglaries to do. I'm really sorry. What about your husband? No, he's on a training course. And you've asked everyone, have you? Only she's going to be in for the next couple of hours. She's got a lot of paperwork to catch up on. Haven't you, Debbie? Go. You wouldn't mind looking after Joanna for an hour, would you? What? <laughs> I don't think so. Thanks, Debbie. There you go. Sorted. 
All right, um... OK, I won't be long. There's some of the books and some colouring pens. And you'll be good for Debbie, won't you, sweets? I'll make it up to you, yeah? I've got my mobile if there are any problems. Right. I give Lee Dwyer six months. What, before I expel him? No, before he's inside. So, are you coming out tonight, then? I think I'll give it a mess. Oh, go on, a few laughs will do you give. I'm not in the mood. Why not? You know why, Nick? Such. Nick. Ah, oh, Jim, Cathy's looking for you. There's been an assault on a young lad, Chris Hayden. Looks like it might be racially motivated. He's up in our interview room. Right. Sarge, <laughs> I wonder if you fancy going out tonight? I, uh, right, I've got a hair appointment. Uh, another time, maybe. Mm. What are you doing? Trying to concentrate. Have you got kids? No, I haven't. Is my mum your boss? No. Debbie. What now? What is it? I need the toilet. I bet you're glad you're off school, aren't you? Not really. It's boring at home. Debbie. Go on, Charlie. I'll help you with you in a minute. OK, do you want to tell me what this is really about? I'm sorry? But this is a joke, isn't it? What, you actually think I want to be in this state? Well, if you really are in this state. What? Oh, come on, you wouldn't be the first woman to try this on the boss, would you? Well, you actually think I'm making this up? Well, I know the way your little mind works, yes. <sighs> but look, I want an explanation, Debbie. Let go of me. Oh, Luke! You're free now, aren't you? I need you to cover a school crossing patrol at three. Someone's off sick. Couldn't Gary do it? Gary? He is the probationer. Mm. Yes, but then no-one's made a complaint against him, have they? Oh, come on, Sarge. Bevinson was out of order. Was he? Anyway, withdrew the complaint, didn't he? You got lucky this time. Three o'clock, Canley Comp. Don't screw it up. What did that man want? Oh, just something about work. Is he your boyfriend? <laughs> no, he's not. Don't wash your hands. But you do fancy him. What makes you say that? Do you, though? No. Did he dump you? Do you usually ask all these questions? I think he's a bit old for you anyway, and a bit grumpy. Yeah. Me too. But you still want to snog him, though, don't you? Excuse me? Don't worry, Debbie. He'll come crawling back. They always do. Pregnant? Four months, according to her. You don't sound convinced. You think she'd lie about something like that? Well, it's a convenient stick to beat me with, isn't it? So what are you going to do? Nothing. If she wants me to react, that's exactly what I'm not going to do. It'll soon become apparent there's no baby. I think you'd do better to try and keep her on side. If you ignore her, you'll aggravate her. Then baby or no baby, she's still got your affair up her sleeve. And if that comes out, your history. Fun. Not for me. Why not? Because you'll be off your face. And your point is? You might be into that team, but I'm not anymore. Is this about the kid that died? Nick, he collapsed in front of me. You didn't see him in the hospital. I want to have a good laugh, Nick, but I want to do it without frying my brain in the process. It is possible, you know. I'm going to remind you the next time you've had a skin for because, I mean, booze isn't a drug, is it? Have you took a candy cop earlier? Sarge? Well, you've got to go back there. Kid's gone wobbly and trashed the classroom. And not Lee Dwyer, by any chance. That's the one. Nominated Tony's Community Bobby of the Year, so he must have a screw loose. Can I take that? Be our guest. Sarge? If you want. We'll see if he still wants to be in your fan club after you've nicked him. Had you seen any of these lads before, Chris? I don't think so. When they stole your mobile phone, did they say anything? 
Like what? Well, did they make any racist comments? No. So, you don't want to press any charges? What's the point? <laughs> to stop them doing it to anyone else. I don't see how. I don't know who they are, what they look like. They didn't say nothing. They beat me up because they wanted my phone. I just want to forget about it. But this will still have to be investigated, Chris. Look, you don't have to decide right now. I want to go home. OK, Chris, I'll show you out. Right, here we are. Yeah, thanks. Not exactly filled with enthusiasm, is he? I came to Sunnyhill to be a police officer, not be an errand boy for Gilmore. Well, why don't you have a word with him? Let him know how you feel. I'm sure he'll give you more responsibility. He's a fair man. Not with me, he isn't. No, he's just testing you. But once he sees you're up for the job, you'll be fine. PC Aston, arrived a boy. Escorted some kids across the road, left the man. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Des. Well, go if you're going. Me and Reggie Babe have got proper police work to be getting on with. Don't forget your lollipop. It all kicked off when they were leaving to go home. We got in a scuffle with Jamie Rayner. The kid that said Lee did the toilets? Yes. Lee went berserk, started throwing things around. The teacher managed to get the other kids out, and then Lee barricaded himself in. Why don't we just keep the door in? Just try and calm him down first. He could hurt himself. Lee? Lee, it's Tony Stepp. I might try to reason with a little stroke like him. Let's just get in there and nick him. Lee? Lee? Get Something wrong. It's not exactly a great result, is it, letting Chris walk away like that? We didn't have a choice. He wouldn't press charges. You hardly gave him time to blink, let alone think things through. Look, it should have been our case in the first place. It wasn't a hate crime, didn't know the guys, wasn't even racially motivated. Well, Des Taverner thought it was. Des Taverner passes anything on to us. He can't be bothered with himself. With a community safety unit, Jim. Not a dumping ground for the cases Taverner and his mates don't want. We should follow it up. Chris knows more than he's letting on. Waste your time with petty street crime. You go ahead. Lee? You okay? Go away. What's up? Why do you care? Kids giving you a hard time? What about? The usual. Having a record. Being thick. So why'd you do this? Somebody landed me in it. Who? Jamie. Thought he was my mate. So? So he told the teachers I'd done the toilets. And did you? Might have known which side you'd be on. You're just the same as all the rest. I'm not on anyone's side, Lee. I'm just trying to find out what's been going on. Come on. Can't stay here forever. Hi. I don't think we've been introduced properly. This is Joanna, Eva's daughter. Hi, Joanna. So, I'm going to sign your cast. Right. Look, Debbie, about what I said today, it was unforgivable, sorry. Yes. Look, I really do want to talk about the situation properly. So I've booked a table at O'Kane's for us tonight. Thought you might like to come. I'll think about it. OK, well, I'll be there if you've got the time. Half past nine. Told you. All right, calm down. What's your name? Naomi. Naomi, what happened? I told her to give him my mobile, but she wouldn't. OK, where is she? In the park. I'll show you. Your mother will get a letter. 
A permanent exclusion order? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Keep your mouth shut and keep walking if I were you. And this time, I want to charge. I've got 600 other children to think of. Well, this is where I left her. She told me to run and get help. She was fighting with them. I'll call for some help to look for her and then we'll get you home, OK? Sierra Oscar from 362. Go ahead. Assistance required, Victoria Park. Uh, possible abduction. Any unit assistance, 362 at Victoria Park, over. Do you think we should get that? Whatever. Yeah, uh, Sierra Oscar from uh, Sierra 1, uh, Shark Daniel? Received. What's Lollipop Boy doing in the park anyway? Someone's very keen to get older here. That's the third time this afternoon. Do you want me to see who it is? Leave it. I thought the idea of text messages was that you were supposed to read them. I want to help you look for Billy. I can't just leave her. We'll be safer at home. She may be on her way back by now. Listen, don't worry, we'll find her. Billy! Listen, go back to the road and wait for the police car, OK? Go on, go! Sierra Oscar from 362. Just heard a gunshot from the lodge in Victoria Park. 362 from Sierra Oscar, we've had a report from a witness who saw three men and a girl entering the lodge a few minutes ago. At least one of them was armed. I'm alerting SO19. Sierra 1 is on its way to pick you and the girl up. In pursuit of two IC1 males bailing out of the lodge. 362, do not follow them. Repeat, do not follow them. They may be armed. Stay where you are and wait for backup. Could be more of Leo! Sierra Oscar from 362. A missing girl's friend has just entered the lodge. How far away at SO19? They're on their way. How long exactly, Sarge? About five minutes. Just hold tight, Luke. 362 from 33. Do not even think about going in there. I don't like the look of this, Sarge. There's no sign of Naomi. Go and join the Eric car on the park road, and that's an order, Luke. <laughs> Don't come any nearer. I don't think taking Debbie out is the best idea. I'm just taking your advice, Alex. If I can get her in a neutral situation, smooth her feathers, I might be able to get to the truth. I was thinking more along the lines of a bit of straight talking. Not a romantic dinner. It's not a romantic dinner. Does she know that? Look, all I want to do is get things on a reasonable footing and put an end to this. It's not me you need to convince. Oh, oh sir. I thought you'd like to know we've got an armed suspect on the loose in Victoria Park. And the day was going so well. It's no good, he's not answering. What's he playing at? Try him again. 362 from Sierra Oscar. Repeat, are you receiving? I'm going down there. 362, repeat, are you receiving? Shut that up! Do it! OK. I'm just going to check on the girls, all right? Stay where you are. What's your name, mate? Come on, tell us your name. Jay. Look, Jay, Billy's hurt. I need to make sure she's all right. Don't move! I don't want you to do anything! Just turn around and walk out of here, and nothing will happen! I'm sorry, Jay. I can't do that. Right, what's the latest, Matt? Inspector Gold and Sergeant Gilmer are on their way. SO19 are in position. The two men seen running away from the lodge have been picked up. Both are unarmed. Situation at the lodge? Well, according to an earlier witness report, three men and a girl went in. At least one of the men was armed. Luke Ashton saw two IC1 males escape and a second girl go into the lodge. Luke Ashton's involved? Yes, sir. And where is he now? Well, we think he's gone in after the girls, but he's not responding to his radio. Oh, that's all I need. It's up to you, Jay. Will you let me look at Billy? Just to make sure she's all right. Hi, Billy. It's all right. Just keep calm.
like Lukey Boy's got an audience for when he messes up. Yeah, he's a very capable young man, he can handle it. That's not what I've heard. You're in a foul mood, aren't you? Get inside the house, you're surrounded by armed police. Give yourselves up. Don't answer them. Can you stand up? What are you doing? We need to get her to the hospital, Jay. She's not going. She could die. None of you are going anywhere. If we don't get her out in time, things could get really bad. For you as well as Billy. It's not just a long stretch you have to worry about. If she dies and it's down to you, you'll never shake it off. You'll carry it around with you for the rest of your life. No, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Just let her go, Jay. What about you? I'll stay. Hello, Mum. What's happening? Well, there's no sign of any activity, and they're still trying to make contact. The other two lads said there's one more in there, and he's definitely armed. Look. Come towards the car. Go around the front of the car. There's no sign of Luke. You did well there, Jay. It's nearly over. All you have to do is walk out there with me. No way. Come on now. You've got the power to finish it. Don't make them come in here. I won't. Not with you in here. I wouldn't be so sure. How much do you get for a second hand mobile these days? A few quid? It's not worth getting your head taken off for, though, is it? Why don't you shut up? Just give me the gun, Jay. Get rid of them! I can't. Get on your radio and tell them to let me go! They won't listen to me. You're lying! Why don't you talk to them? You don't blow off. Oh, listen, don't listen to him, mate. You did very well. He's got women trouble. There he is. Well done, Luke. Thanks, Cass. Sergeant Boyden said that Jay guy's got four a mile long. Inspector Gold's gonna love you. You're probably after street crime rate in one afternoon. Yeah, I know. Hey, glad you're in one piece. That's a hell of a risk you took. Yeah, I think it was worth it. You did well. Cheers, Tom. Looks like I'll be doing the crossing duties round there from now on. Played, mate. Cheers, mate. Sarge? Debriefing, Luke. As soon as you like. Hi. Sorry I'm so late. You been OK? Yeah. I hope she's not been too much trouble. No, she's been helping me. Debbie, let me do some real police work. Oh, i better take you home before you take over the place. You've got a great kid there. Thanks, Sarge. All right, come on, you. Bye. Have fun tonight. Thanks, too. Luke, come in. Before we start, I've spoken to the hospital and Billy's going to be all right. I thought you'd like to know. Thanks, Sarge. I hear that Jay and his associates have admitted to a number of other mobile phone robberies over the last few months. Yeah, that's right. So, good result. Sarge. How do you think you did this afternoon? Yeah, I'd say I did pretty good. Would you? You've charged Lee Dwyer, then? Yeah, he's off home with his mum for now. So how can I help you? It's complicated. Well, enlighten me. Well, I think the reason Lee lost him is because he was accused of something he didn't actually do. Which justifies him smashing the place up. No, but the bottom line is, Lee's facing permanent exclusion from school and a custodial sentence, which I think is a bit over the top in his case. We can't just ignore it, Tony, even if you do have a good relationship with him. I'd like to set up a joint meeting between Lee and his mum, the head, probation officer and ourselves. 
See if we can't come up with some strategy to help Lee stay in school and keep out of prison. It's not going to be that easy to persuade the head, not after today. It's got to be worth a try, Mum, and if it works, it's going to save us a lot of trouble in the long run. Oh, all right, see what you can do. Oh, and Tony. Mum. I hope Lee's going to repay you for all this time and effort you're putting in. I think he will. You walk into a building without any support, knowing that an armed and violent suspect was inside, and knowing that the ARV was on its way. I use my judgment. Your judgment? I couldn't leave those girls in danger. You risked those girls' lives. And put other officers at risk, as well as yourself. And for what? To look like a hero? You said I did well. No, I said it was a good result, which it was. But the way you went about it was utterly irresponsible. You ignored a direct order from two senior officers, myself and Sergeant Boyden, just so you can exercise a few personal demons. That's not true. You're lucky you haven't got three further deaths on your conscience tonight. I want your IRB filled out immediately. Then I'll decide what action to take. Off you go. You've got a serious problem, Gilmore. I beg your pardon? I got a result today. Everybody else here thinks I did okay. But no. You treat me like some kind of muppet, like you always do. I suggest you change your tone. You are bullying me and I don't know why, but you are. This has nothing to do with bullying. This is about you being incapable of doing your job. Well, we'll see if Inspector Gold agrees with you then. PC Ashton! When you finish doing your IRB, I want you back on the front desk. There you go. See, I can't go clubbing on my own, can I? Well, it's really simple, Nick. I'll come with you, as long as you stick to the booze. That's if you can. You make me sound like I'm some kind of junkie. So I am capable of having a good time without drugs, you know. Well, then prove it. 140 from Sierra Oscar. Go ahead, Sarge. Flat 13, 13, Atley House. Reports of an assault. Received. So, tonight, then? Anything to stop you nagging, but you're getting the first round in. Who can I help? It's my son, Jamie. He's gone missing. Over here! What happened? I found him in the top of the stairs! He was just lying there! Yeah, 518, ambulance police to Atley House. <coughs> What's your name, mate? <coughs> Chris Hayden. <coughs> I took Jamie to school this morning like normal. Then I get a call at work to say he's gone. He's not been home. Has he gone missing before? Not for this long. And Jamie has special needs. Look, he's a slow learner. Could he be with friends? He hasn't got any, really. Well, apart from Lee, and I've been there already. Lee's been with his mum ever since they got back from here. We'll start a search for Jamie, and we'll let you know the moment we have anything. I'll get somebody to drop you home, OK? That's... <clears throat> Job for the night shift, I think. I'd like to look for him. Be sure. Yeah. I'll give you an and. Thanks. Well, keep in touch with Cad. I bet Lee got to Jamie for crossing him up. Well, let's find Jamie and then move on to the theory, shall we? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about today. I didn't behave very well. I'm not doing this to wind you up. No, I know. Of a shot or something. That was for me too. So do you know what you want to do? Don't worry, I'm not going to force you to marry me. It's not what I meant. After your reaction today, I imagine you want nothing to do with me. But if you need anything, anything at all, you just say the word Debbie. You know how serious an accusation of bullying is? Yes, ma'am. Well, from what I can tell, Sergeant Gilmore hasn't given you any duties out of the ordinary. No, but he's just given me all the worst jobs. <laughs> They'll need doing, Luke. You can't just cherry-pick the ones that you find most interesting. No, it's not just that. It's the way that he talks to me, especially in front of the relief. He's picking on me. All right. You obviously feel strongly about it, and I take complaints from my officers very seriously. But before you make it official, I think you might like to know that it was Sergeant Gilmore who took Larry Bevington out of making a formal complaint against you. Gilmore? Mm. As it happens, he went to considerable trouble. Why? Because he's a good sergeant. He looks after the people in his care. 
And as far as today is concerned, I know you showed considerable courage, but I have to say, Luke, I think Sergeant Gilmore was right. It was reckless and stupid. I suggest you have a good, long, hard think before you take this any further. Come on. You look really happy, Nick. You can hardly tell that you're not off your face. Yeah, very funny. I'm really glad to come out with you tonight. Do you fancy another drink? Jamie? I'm PC Gary Best. My mum asked us to find you. And your mum? She's been worried. You never came home from school. Someone hit me. Not lead wire by any chance. Yeah. Why did he do that? Because what happened at school? You mean him smashing up the classroom? No, the toilets. But why did he hit you for that? Because I told on him. He doesn't sound like much of a friend. I lied. Lied? I done the toilets. Lee came in after. But if they knew, they'd, they'd tell me, Mum. So why did you do it? The other kids called me names all the time. Sometimes I get a bit angry. Smashed up my mum's garden shed last time. Come on, it's all right. We better get you home. So what are you doing? Actually, I'm starting a new job. And don't tell me you're in PR or you're a model. Hairdresser. Really? Do you uh, do highlights because I've always wanted some of them? Yeah, you could do with a bit of attention. What about you? Pardon? Where do you work? I'm a pilot. Executive jet. Really? You said you'd do anything to make things right. Yeah, and I meant it. Does that include getting back together? I can't rewrite history. I'm joking, Tom. Look, I want to do the right thing by you. And I want you to realise that you're not on your own in this. What I really need is to... get my head around this. Work out what the best way forward is. Because, to be honest with you, I'm... I'm totally confused. I do understand. Enjoying yourself. Who's your mate? Um, uh, this is Kerry, and Kerry, this is a work colleague of mine. This is Cass. Oh, wow, you do the same thing as Nick. You've got an amazing job, must be fantastic. Uh, yeah. And uh, she gets to work with me. Lucky girl. Mm. Bye, Nick. Sorry, Right. So your place or mine? Oh. Why wait? I've got a job for you and Brandon. I'm out to see Chris Haven. The lad who wouldn't press charges yesterday. Can't it wait? I don't think so. He got badly beaten up last night. He's in St Hughes. Cathy told me it was a uniform shout. Well, Sergeant Gilmore said he was asking for me personally, and I guess that means that Cathy's wrong. Oh, by the way, I like the hair. Had a go last night. Oh, Alex. Yeah. It uh, went very well. You didn't. No, oh, don't be stupid. I haven't got a death wish. I just let Debbie know where her best interests lay, that was all. Thank you. Was it worth it? I think you could say that, yeah. 
She was beautiful, gorgeous, funny. Bladdered. <laughs> you gonna see her again? In a way, I hope I don't. Why not? Well, I don't want to spoil the perfection that was last night. I just want to hold on to that memory. Oh, pass me a bucket. So, Jamie admits to fitting Lee up for the vandalism on the toilets. I should make the head think twice. If it's true. Well, why shouldn't it be? Well, Jamie's a frightened kid. He might see anything to stop Lee hitting him. Even on up to something he didn't do. Do you always think the worst of people, Gary? Thought he went with a job. Yeah, but you're a probationer. You're supposed to be young and idealistic. Must have missed that bit. Sorry. You see Ashton? I wanted to apologise for yesterday. You were right. I was stupid and I should have listened to you. And I wanted to say thanks for what you did with Mr Bevinson. What? Oh, I Inspector Gold told me that you persuaded him to drop the complaint. She shouldn't have. I know we didn't exactly see eye to eye at the beginning, Sarge. And I haven't made it easy for you, I know. I suppose what I'm asking for is a second chance. Can we start again? Okay, look. Clean slate. Thanks, Sarge. I really appreciate it. I won't let you down. All set? Yeah, coming. Sarge. Luke. This is uh, Kerry Young, our new recruit. Hi, Kerry. Nice to meet you. Hello. Right. See you in a minute. Well, I'm not going to miss P.C. Young's welcome, I hope. I hear you've been talking to Luke Ashton. Yeah, he came to see me last night. Did he make a complaint about me? Did you expect him to? Well, he made it clear he was less than happy with my management. And what do you think of him? Uh, he's bright. I'm sure he'll fit in, given time. And that's it? Mum. And there's no personal dimension to this? None whatsoever, Mum. Good. That's exactly what I told PC Ashton. I assured him I have absolute confidence in you as his supervising officer. I meant every word I said. Relax, Craig. So, it was the same two blokes as before. Yeah. Would you be able to recognize them again? I know them. Did they say anything? They told me to keep my mouth shut. Said that me and my kind would get a lot worse if I blabbed to you. Your kind? They pick on anyone who's not white. Rob them. Beat them up if they fight back. Chris, would you be willing to make a statement? I'm not sure. We wouldn't push you into anything you didn't want to do. We are here to help you. If you were dealing with it, then I might. Oh. Just call the number on the card. You'll get straight through to me. What's she like, then? We said she's dead fit. That was before Sergeant Boyden got hold of her. We'll never see her again, probably. <laughs> Afternoon. Afternoon. Right, everyone. This is PC Kerry Young, who's been mad enough to join us. I hope you give her a warm welcome. sure we all want what's best for Lee. <laughs> You've had it in for him right from the start. Julie. Yeah, well, she has. It's not just what happened yesterday. It's his behaviour over the last year. Lee's had four temporary exclusions. He's been involved in 12 cases of vandalism and been truant for 31 days. He's been involved in more fights and more cases of bullying than the space to record. And that is apart from his behaviour in class. The school doesn't want to permanently exclude anyone, but Lee's behaviour leaves us no choice. 
Come on, Lee. Where are you going? Well, what is the point? She's made up her mind already. Look, if you walk out now, that means Lee will be out of school and probably inside. I can't believe that's what you want. It's got to be a record. What has? Sleeping with the new PC before she's even arrived. Yeah, we we'll just put it down to charisma. So now you've got to see her again, what you're going to do. Right, OK. What do you think? I'm not going to let her get away twice. Good luck. I don't need it. Hi, Nick. Oh, I'll leave you to it. No, she's trying to make out that he is all bad and he isn't. He doesn't like school. He doesn't do well there and the teachers pick on him. There is no point her shaking her head because they do. Is there anything else? <sighs> no. Look, uh, I wouldn't have tried to call this meeting if I thought Lee was a lost cause. I can see that the school's been through a hell of a time. But I agree with Julie. The picture you paint of him, it's just not the lad that I know. I think Lee is trying to fit in, but he needs the right opportunity, and I don't think he's getting that at school. Lee's young. I think we should try and go that extra mile for him. You're asking a lot. Well, we're willing to help all we can. And I'm sure Lee understands the seriousness of his position. And there I was going to ask you if you'd cut my hair. Oh, it's a good job I didn't let you fly me anywhere. So tell me, are you still going to speak to me now you know I'm a copper? Oh, it depends if you will now you know I'm a copper. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we discuss this over a drink after work? I can't. Tomorrow night? I mean, I can't ever. Well, why not? We, we had a good time, didn't we? I've got a boyfriend. Oh. We'd had a massive row. I didn't exactly expect to see you again. I reckon it's probably for the best if we pretend it never happened. Yeah, right. You haven't told anyone, have you? No. What about that PC? Well, Cass. All she knows is that I went home alone. I just don't want everyone in the relief thinking I behave like that normally. And I don't think my boyfriend would be too impressed. Of course. That's not a problem. Thanks, Nick. I'm sorry. You all right, Des? Yeah, why well, shouldn't I be? I'm just a little bit under the weather, that's so all. Didn't sleep much last night, did I? Spare me the details. Where are you going now? I've got something to do. What? I won't be long. See, what am I supposed to do? Wait. You just watch yourself. Next time, it'll be out of my hands. It won't be a next time. Right, Lee, you go and unlock the car. So what happens now? If he behaves himself, there's a good chance he won't get kicked out of school. Out my way, piglet. What did you say? Mess with me and I'll tell Uncle Tony. Only sort out the little boys yourself, dear. I know you at Jamie. And I reckon you bullied him and didn't confess he needed the toilet. So you can't prove nothing. Come on, Lily, get in the car. Thank you very much. Bye. Now, hang on. You're saying it's my fault this kid got beaten up. It was clearly a racial assault. Not true. Chris denied there was a racial dimension. Look, we've no way of knowing it was anything other than a classic street crime. Which you're not bothered about. Which uniform we're dealing with. It's not the remit of the community safety unit. We are meant to be winning people's trust, not disappearing when the going gets tough. Don't patronise me. And don't try and pretend you are committed to the CSU. We both know the only reason you're here is to win a passport to the CID. You know it all, don't you? Well, at least I know how to talk to people. And I don't! No, you don't! You must cost that boy his life! Jim, that's enough! Cathy, leave us alone, will you? Ten minutes only, OK? Afternoon, Dad. I should have taken care of you while I had the chance. Jim, what the hell is wrong with you? I could hear you halfway down the corridor. Kathy screwed up. So talk to me about it. <laughs> talk to you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Now come on, out with it. I've already told you I didn't think Kathy was right for the CSU, but you didn't want to hear. No, because it's none of your business. It is when I'm getting yelled at for something that Kathy did. I know exactly what this is about. 
You've got a problem with Cathy because you are desperate to get back into CID and you're scared she's going to get there first. That's ridiculous. Jim, let's face it, you are old school and the only reason you're here at all is because you blackmailed your way in. Oh, now it becomes clear. It would be a lot easier for you if I got shoved back into uniform, wouldn't it? That way, I wouldn't be under your feet. A constant reminder... Oh, now you're being ridiculous. ...of what happened between us. I am us. not talking about this during work. Oh, yeah, that's right, Sergeant. Let's ignore it a bit longer, shall we? Let's shove it under the carpet where it all belongs. I'm going. Along with all those other parts of yourself that you want to bury. All the other bits that show you're not actually dead from the neck down. Get out! How would I send text messages from in here? One of your little friends. You're overtired, Des. You've been trying to think, haven't you? Wearing out your brain cell. You need to take a break. I can still hurt you, you know. Even in here. Don't you think stitching me up was enough? You got what you deserved. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, PC Tavener, but the text messages have nothing to do with me. See, I know what you did. By the looks of it, I'm not the only one, am I? You wanted to see me, sir? Yeah, they'll be coming. Close the door. Just wondered how you were, that's all. Fine. Thanks. It's good. A lot better since last night. It's a weight off my mind that you're being so reasonable. It's no problem. I've been doing a bit of thinking. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. Yeah, it's probably easier for me to keep a clearer head right now than you, what with the hormones flying around and everything. Hmm. Yeah, you're probably right. What's on your mind? Well, I know you didn't want to rush into anything, but... Well, the clock's hardly on our side, is it, with you being 16 weeks? So what are you getting at? Look, I made an appointment. What for? Well, it's just a preliminary chat. If it's inconvenient, you can change it. This is for an abortion clinic. Yeah. Look, don't go getting emotional on me. You said you'd let me make up my mind about what I wanted to do. You said you'd help me. Yes, and I will. I will get you the best care that money can buy. This needn't be unpleasant. Unpleasant? A child isn't a viable option for either of us right now, Debbie. You want me to have an abortion? Let's get real here. All you're worried about is your career. That's not true! You with a baby, you're hardly mother material, are you? Next on The Bill. I thought you promised me you wouldn't get into any more trouble, eh? What have you been nicking this time? I'll call you tomorrow. I'm, I'm trying, trying to ask you to marry me. I warned you, you're nicked! I need an answer from you, and I need it now. Don't tell me! Don't tell me! For what? 